this is Nicholas Bell with Ion Cinema here to review House of Gucci, the 27th feature directed by Ridley Scott, the second one to drop this year after The Last Duel, uh, which United Artists releasing is uh, distributing in time for Thanksgiving on November 24th, 2021. It's a very high profile project. Uh, it's based on a book written by Sarah Gay Forden, a uh, fashion journalist who covered the rise and fall of the House of Gucci. Uh, that was adapted by Becky Johnston, uh, who uh, was the scribe for Prince of Tides and Under the Cherry Moon, uh, and Roberto Bentevegna. Uh, and I want to call out their names because I think that there's, uh, there are two very large problems with this film. Uh, one is the script and the other is the casting, uh, because this is really a story that should have been told by an Italian film director with Italian actors speaking Italian. Uh, as it stands, we cover roughly 20 years uh, from 1978 to 1997 uh, when uh, a woman named Patricia, Patricia Reggiani, played by Lady Gaga, finagles her way into the Gucci empire by marrying uh, Maurizio Gucci, uh, and then uh, only to have a murder-for-hire uh, scandal hit in 1995 when he is uh, shot and killed uh, at her beckoning after she has uh, consulted with her psychic, uh, Pina, played by Salma Hayek, uh, as her confidant who advises her to do so. So that all sounds it has all the, the makings for a, a very juicy, scandalous uh, adult film, but it really is none of those things whatsoever. Uh, and it's almost as if the film, with its very glitzy, Oscar-heavy cast, kind of loses focus, and we never really get to know any of these characters. And in fact, the casting kind of distracts uh, Lady Gaga, who is giving uh, a performance that she seems invested in uh, isn't supported any way whatsoever in a script that tends to tell rather than show uh, in, in too many ways to even properly mention here. Uh, Adam Driver, who also starred in Ridley Scott's The Last Duel, also a film where those people aren't speaking the language they should be, uh, albeit in a way that was we were able to be transported into that environment more easily than here. Uh, his supposedly playing this meek, mild-mannered, henpecked um, uh, elitist, it seems too confident and too uh, self-assured to really make that work. I think Al Pacino uh, and Jeremy Irons as the uh, as Aldo and Rodolfo Gucci, who inherited this business from their f father, the creator Guccio Gucci, I think they f kind of fare the best with characterization, but the accent work is all over the board by everyone, perhaps except uh, Jared Leto. Uh, however, that is this is a, that is a camp performance amongst itself, uh, which goes everywhere from uh, will remind you of Grey Gardens to uh, the comedian Gallagher with how he looks. Uh, again, one gets the sense that might have even been felt or felt more elevated with a better script, but even some of the dialogue Jared Leto has to say, it's really quite terrible. A lot of the details in the plot, there's a portrait, there's a very infamous Klimt portrait that is used to kind of tell us uh, information about uh, Patricia that really makes no sense and is quite distracting. All of the supporting characters, there's no real kind of, uh, any kind of poetic license taking, taken with giving them characterization. So it feels kind of like it's operating between a Ryan Murphy production, uh, although Halston kind of has this beat for uh, its scope. Uh, and um, maybe Harold Robbins from the 1970s, uh, or even a Lifetime film, uh, especially when we have uh, young Tom Ford coming in, and all the two scenes with his dialogue are especially egregious. Um, that said, you might find some things that you uh, like or are entertained by in this two and a half hour running time, but at the end of the day, it just feels very monotonous, uh, very bloated. It totally sidesteps the trial that seems like the most sensational kind of element of all, or the two years that transpired between the murder and when Patricia was finally uh, arrested. Um, how, however, none of that energy is examined whatsoever. Instead, what it does is it kind of Lady Gaga's orbit kind of soaks up everything, even in comparison to um, her previous film, of course, the fourth version of A Star is Born. Uh, and there's a moment in the courtroom where she's insisting on being called a name, which makes this seem like the dark side of A Star is Born, uh, particularly if you compare it to a very famous scene with Judy Garland in her version uh, of that film. Uh, 
at the end of the day, it just feels very bloated, very all over the place. Uh, it's not an elegant film. The opulence of Gucci itself as a fashion house, that this should have felt decadent and dark. Uh, it even wastes uh, very high profile soundtrack selections that don't fit either the actual period that it's in. Uh, I don't think makeup and wardrobe really do uh, Gaga any real service. Uh, and But it's really the script that ultimately lets them all down. Overall, I would give House of Gucci one out of five stars. Thank you. Hey, this is Eric from MyOwnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.